Hello there, this is Ron Wills coming back at you with yet another video. The man women want. Yeah. Now I know some people, uh, they got my book Nice Guys and Players and they see that subtitle, uh, Becoming the Man Women Want. And you know what's interesting? There have been some men, some detractors who actually consider it some simping thing like, oh no, I'm just going to do what I want to do. I ain't going to be what they want. But they not really getting what a woman really is going for, right? Let me um, let me give y'all some game on this, right? Uh, just in general and then really what, you know, really what my book is about, right? Back in, I remember, here's an example. I remember years ago, right? There was a t-shirt. And I seen I saw it in the uh, DC area, right? And it was called uh, Main Man, right? And it showed Main Man dunking on somebody, Main Man making some money, some woman reverse cowgirl on uh, on Main Man, and it conveyed a point. Now, if anybody's seen that from the DC area, or if well, better yet, know the dude who created that. Hey, give me a sh give me a holler. Shoot, that dude need to get that back out there. If he don't want to get it back out there, shoot. We might have to put together a deal to buy the property from him. But check it out, right? It conveyed a basic thing of game. Now, see, a lot of people think game is all about lines and all of that. No. The one thing, it was always, when I was coming up, it was always about being that thorough dude, right? And being thorough just meant you were hitting on, if not all cylinders, every, you know, as many as possible. You know, see, we didn't have that concept of uh, really dudes trying to be pimps. That, that you know, pimping, that, that was its own world or max or anything. But it was understood that to really get women, you had to be able to do certain things. You had to be, you had one, you had to be able to talk to them, you know. And just to be clear, this ain't something that was just from the 70s and 80s when I was a child. But, you know, my uncle was telling me how, like back in the 50s, get a woman, you had to be able to talk, you had to have a jump shot, you know, dress pretty well. So, you know, coming up, you had to, you had to be able to talk to a woman at least. You had to be, um... You know, you had to be decent at some sport. Like, I remember, like, women would check you out playing sports. I remember I went to visit my uncle, right? And they had this fine little sister living next door to him. And, you know, uncle was, me and uncle was throwing some, you know, we throwing a football around, running some plays. It was me and a few other uh, cousins and stuff, right? And that woman, she was sitting out there just looking at us. And, you know, especially uh, people who might have been in the hood, y'all know, like... That goes to like some of those basketball courts where they're running some ball or something. And a whole lot of times they have some fine women just sitting on the side. You know, especially some of those leagues, they got some of those hustlers up there playing and stuff. You know? So, you know, you had to have that you had to have some type of ball game. Maybe maybe not basketball, but I say either basketball or football or something. You had to be kind of like one of those. You know, it's probably easy in basketball, football. You know, you either had to be really be the quarterback, running back, or wide receiver. That's why a lot of brothers, <laughs> they fight to get those positions and stuff. You know, sometimes you be that MLB, you know, middle linebacker. But, you know, but you, you had to have that sports game. And then, uh, you know, you had to kind of really, if you really want to get the women, you had to be able to, be able to party with women. Now, I'm just saying, this is this is coming up. So, you know, you had to be that type who could go to a party. You had to be decent at dancing. You didn't have to be, you know, like you're going to be on uh, some dancing show or something like that. But you had to be decent at dancing at least, you know. You couldn't be out there all afflicted, right? So, you know, you had to have a lot of those things. You had to be well-rounded. But then you had to have, uh, you know, as they got, that's when you younger, but as you got older, you had to uh, have some hustle to you or something, you know? 
be that type. Look like he can go get that money. So it was just like thorough. And just carry yourself. And you know what? Part of it too is you had to have at least a reputation like you could throw hands. Or at least willing to. You know, you had to have all of that. Even if you weren't really weren't in the hood, you had to seem like you that type you could hold your own in a fight. You know, so like I said, uh, the whole game is being around. Now, you know, I know some dudes will say, well, a man shouldn't have to do all that. He should be himself. Um, should is a nice word. But I'm going on what fucking worked. And it's not something new. It ain't something Rom came up with. I mean, that's just some street shit. And it's probably going back, I don't know, eons and stuff. Because I've talked about Master Yao booked uh you know master in the uh, master masculine awakening the master masculine rather and i talked about the house of the man you know because you had that protective thing that providing thing that thinking thing and then that uh you know n- you know knock her back out thing you know break her back thing break that pussy thing you know that's just the same principle and, you know, even though somebody would wonder why I would mention this author, but, you know, it's the concept is old. You know, the concept is old. Tariq Nasheed talked about this in his book, The Art of Mackin'. He talked about this. He just used different words. He just he talked about the four P's, the player, the professional, the pushover, the parolee. And he said, you know, the man who would uh, most fascinate a woman is the one who has the best qualities of the four P's. And that, you know, and that's the same thing I talk, even in Nice Guys and Plays, when I talk about the four categories, if people, anybody who's like read through it, I'll see I have a fifth category, the real man, and that's the dude who's bringing the best qualities of all of them. And even if you listen to my man Warren B, like really listen to him, he's saying the same thing. I think he did a video where he, he ain't quite put it that same way, but if you look at what he's talking about, it's having that thorough quality. And, you know, maybe because he's from D.C. too. I don't know. I'm going to throw it out there. I think D.C. has the best game. Now, <laughs> let's have some fun with it. <laughs> hey, I'm going to throw that to you, BGS. You tell me. D- D.C. or L.A. <laughs> but seriously, though, all the, if you really look at different authors who really get into... The real game, that's some bullshit where you faking. It's always about being that man who could satisfy women on different levels. And in fact, for men who prefer that their woman don't cheat, the more that you satisfy her on different levels, like if you look, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. This woman this woman told me this, right? She said, She said, Rom, I'll make love to a man in such a way he ain't gonna wanna cheat. Now, if you look at why women cheat or why they might look outside of it, a lot of times they don't get everything they want in one man. But if they can, hey, they they good to go. They ain't going nowhere. They don't even want to go anywhere. And in fact, when, I, uh, when my book first came out, a lot of women bought it for that read. They understood what I was talking about. It wasn't about pleasing the women. It was about what they gravitate towards naturally. Now, if you're a man, you walk in a room... And you give a woman that impression that, hey, you know how to get that money. You can throw hands. You're a thinking man. And you can bone. I mean, if you look at the thumbnail, right? I use uh, Amari Hardrick as Ghost from the uh, show Power. Now, I know some people will say, well, he sent for that Spanish woman and all that. But a lot of dudes don't get it. It ain't nobody going to be perfect in it. Plus, I mean, on a practical level, they had to have some damn drama in it. So, But even then, that dude, if you really look at his character, what he got? He thorough. He thorough. I don't care what anybody trying to fake and say. I'm sorry, you don't build up some major organization being just some simp motherfucker. You really don't. Even if it look like it. And quite frankly, you know, having some sensitivity is part of being thorough. But as long as you control that shit, you know, as long as you got it with the right woman. 
you know, women held you down, women who support you, women who appreciate you. And it's all right, just, you know, bring her some flowers every now and then, tell her she's beautiful. You know, as long as you keep that shit reasonable. Now, if you just doing it and she ain't doing shit for you, you're straight simp. But anyway, if you look at ghosts, right, what he doing? Okay, one, he look good to women. And it's pretty established by the characters he can bring it. He can bring it in the bedroom. Dude, obviously a thinker. He don't build some organization not being a thinker, right? Dude, he got that warrior in him. You know, that protecting him, that viciousness in him. You know, and you know, he... You know, he's sweet on his family and his kids. So, you know, that little sensitivity thing, right? And then, you know, definitely about going to get that money. So, you're definitely a hunter. You know, get those resources and shit. And, you know, if you look at it, that's why they like him. Like, um, even if you look at him, he got a level of seriousness, too. Like, some of you, a man with those level of characteristics, you know, does something. Like another book. And see, I've talked about... See, people who follow me a very long time know I've talked about Ghost a lot, that character. Also that character from the Sister Soldier books, Midnight. And I think one of the things that women went... A lot of women went crazy over just the description of him, right? But if you look at him, what was he? You know, he was described as being physically attractive. You know, that turns on the women by itself. But, you know, he was sharp, though. You know, when all his, organ you know, all the people in the organization he was with were getting busted, they said police came after him. All he had in his room was a mattress and a candle. So he was sharp. You know? You know, definite thinker. You know, if you look at the further books, definite warrior. Definitely protective of a family man, really. So, I mean... <laughs> But women go crazy over that. See, nice guys and players, what I'm talking about, what somebody like Tariq Nasheed talking about, what Master Yao talking about, with a lot of, uh, well, I don't know if it's a lot, but anybody's really in tune to the game. Warren B., what he talking about. It's just becoming that thorough type of man. Because here's the thing, right? Here, here's the thing. Now, a lot of guys think, you doing it for the women, but really you doing it for yourself, man. What the women, when they come across that type of man, they're they, they going to fall into place. They're going to fall into formation. Uh-huh. Seriously, they're going to fall. They don't want to even mess with that type of man. They come across, I've seen women come across that thorough type of dude, like in real life. I mean, I use some fictional examples, but like I knew this one brother, right? And this brother, this a Muslim brother, right? But women, they used to go crazy over him. Because, you know, he had the build. You know, women liked his looks. But dude was, you know, real serious-minded, though. That that dude, he dropped knowledge. He, he sit there and talk, man. He, he, can, he can talk on anything philosophical. But, you know, he still had that bad boy in him because he used to be a drug dealer. You know, reform drug dealing. That shit drive women crazy. Somebody got that bad boy. He had a viciousness, too. He had a... I mean, it was like... He was very soft-spoken and all of that. And, you know, part of that, he even said, he was like, when he, you know, when he made love to these numerous women, you know, he, he was romantic with them and shit. But he was probably one of the most vicious people. I've I seen him get vicious on somebody. He wasn't no punk motherfucker. Like, straight vicious, like, take him out right there. He ain't give a fuck. That dude was very protective. And very loyal, too. You know? Like, if I called him up, say, dude, um, I need you and the crew up here for something. That dude's up there without even thinking about it. That dude up here, be, he be up here before the phone, before I get off the phone. You know? And you got dude, but he got plenty of women. You got dudes like that. Who are thorough And that's it That's all I'm saying And um That's the man If a dude Like every dude Need to aspire to Hit on as many cylinders As possible And like I said It's not really about the women It's about yourself But A byproduct of that Is the women You won't have to say anything To a woman Because they're gonna pick up on it. If you got that type of vibe You can literally Go into a room 
sit down, be quiet, they're going to gravitate over towards you. They're going to be like, who the fuck is this motherfucker? Like, people thought I was exaggerating or talking some esoteric shit, but that's just women. They're going to respond to you, just the nature of women. If I get deeper into it, every box that you're checking off is touching something within them. It's either touching their womb, it's touching their maternal instinct, which if a woman with a maternal instinct wants to be protected, it touches that gathering instinct. A woman with a gathering instinct, well, if that's dominant, well, the gather, well, I put it like this, a gathering instinct in a woman makes her feel, a, well, calls her to feel attracted to a man who can go get those resources. And, you know, especially and if a woman who's like more of a thinker, she's going to want a thinking type of man. So the more you can hit, or if a woman's just into that whole sensual party girl thing, she wants that man who can provide that pleasure. So the more that a man can develop himself, the more that he attracts the women around him. And he gets a big net. Then by becoming that man that women subconsciously want, he then, he then gets power because he can choose. Because he has so many women coming at him, he can pick and choose who he want to deal with. And it's like a magnet. They're going to they gonna try to seduce him. He don't even need to he don't even open his mouth. He walk in the room. And there's some women... A lot of women, you talk to some women, they can, they can get off just looking at a man. He, if he can just walk across the room and they, shoot, they wet. Because when women looking at a man examining him, it's not just that mouthpiece, what he's saying, but they're looking at his entire being. And if you if you're, if it's a man, your entire being, like, uh, broadcast that you, you know, you hitting on all these cylinders, boom, there it is. So anyway, that's it for today. It's been real, and I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.